So first, I want to thank Sands for uh, really coming up with the idea of hosting this small business summit and having uh, the discussions and listening to the discussions all day. I wanted to give a little bit more background about myself, because I think when you hear about all the federal government jobs I've done, and I've been in this for, uh, it seems like a close to 30 years, um, my first experience of meeting Alan was back in 1996, when the project that I was working on at Department of Justice, we were the first website to ever get hacked in the federal government. And Alan showed up and uh, he was there to help us and so when we start talking about the critical controls and SANS involvement and everything, that was the birth of the SANS top 10 because it was lessons learned from what happened to us in 1996. And I will say the happiest day in my life was two weeks later when the CIA website got hacked. And so the focus went on to them. But those lessons learned have been with me forever. So then you're kind of wondering, okay, well, what about small businesses. So I'm going to give you a little bit. I am a small business owner. And my husband, uh, we live in a small town within West Virginia. He is a small business owner and was for 30 years. And he ran a dental practice. And uh, not every dentist has a CIO as a wife who could help with the automation of his business practice and the protection of the information and listening to everything that everybody's been talking about today. I hearken back to all those uh, days with my husband where I did talk to him about, hey, you got to back up this data. And he goes, oh, OK. And he would leave in the office and I'd be like, do you have a fireproof safe in the office for where you're leaving this? Um, and so it's just a lot of these lessons learned. So I'm happy to be here today to talk about creating this culture of cyber readiness. And a lot of what uh, all the speakers have talked about all day, you're going to see wrapped up in the discussion points that I'm going to hit today. What I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the Cyber Readiness Institute itself. So we, we are a nonprofit and we're focused on small business. And we got our start after um, the Obama administration had the Commission on Cybersecurity. And it was co-chaired by Sam Palmisano, who is the chair of the Global Enterprise, Center for Global Enterprise. And also there were industry leaders CEOs from other companies such as MasterCard. And so these co-founders went and said, hey, we really have to be focused on small and mid-sized businesses because a lot of the resources going forward will be focused on state and local governments and critical infrastructure. But really what you've heard consistently today and what you know yourself as being a small business is the economic driver across the globe is small and mid-sized businesses. So what this map is showing you is the reach that uh, the cyber readiness program has. So the program reach where you're seeing in yellow across this board here are uh, countries where we've had at least 50 or more individuals. And when I say individuals, like uh, I'll explain the difference going forward that have completed our program, the cyber readiness program that we have available. And in uh, the green areas are where we've directly connected and um, have taught classes, have outreached, have programs where we're personally involved and our team is personally involved with those countries, businesses, um, sessions that we have done across the globe. And you heard from one of our co-chairs earlier today, which was MasterCard, we also have Apple, Principal Financial, and Microsoft. And Exxon Mobil and GM are part of the founding teams and remain committed to the CRI mission going forward. And, and the reason why I want to focus on these larger businesses is because they also then recognize through their own global supply chains that the, a lot of the businesses that they deal with within just their own supply chains are small and mid-sized businesses. And so for them to continue, for the small businesses to continue, that they really had to take a look at their own internal supply chains. What, they, what could they do and how could they help those small businesses and mid-sized businesses continue to grow? Ooh, 
went too far. So what does this really mean about creating a culture of cyber readiness going forward for small businesses? And, and how do you really do this? And you've heard different things today going forward, a lot of technical capabilities, a lot of steps about password protection, about how to move forward, um, you know, different tool sets that could be out here. Um, I also have to throw out a statistic for you. Uh, all of us have been giving different statistics here. And, uh, but I think the biggest thing is, is hearing that a ransomware attack or something that happens to a small business is really devastating going forward. And the whole idea of a small business is to grow to a mid-sized business to eventually grow to a large business. And, um, and resources are, are scarce. And what we're really trying to be focused on is how can we move forward to create this co culture, be focused on the human behavior so that as you continue to grow, this culture is, is foundational within your business. And the other piece of this, and I'm going to say this over and over and over again, our resources are free. And then that's the key because the commitment that we're asking for you is your time. And we know that time is also a critical resource for small and mid-sized businesses. So how do you go forward? How do you take this practical steps? How do you really create this culture? So we say, you know, hands-on from the mailroom to this uh, C-suite. But the idea really is our materials are generated in a way that um, it can go from the small person pizza shop all the way up to a large business. And as I was reading all the uh, Slack channel discussions, there were a lot of uh, resources that were sent out about how do you actually define a small and mid-sized business. And a lot of this is going to depend on what vertical you're in. Uh, you know, the, the census does it one way, SBA does it another way. Sometimes it's done by dollars. Sometimes it's done by people. But what's critical to all of this, and I think this is the theme that you've heard throughout the day, is, is that it's going to be the people that are going to make this work. It's going to be the culture of an organization that is going to make this work. So I wanted to be focused on that. And what we um, focus on within the CRI program is we have a program itself for the organization. And we do, you've heard it earlier today too, we have a program called the Cyber Leader Program. And it is the cyber leader who we you know, kind of reach out to that we tax, that we say that person is the one who is creating that culture within the organization, but they need the support of the leadership. So if you're a two person pizza shop and one's the owner and you're the worker and you're the cyber leader, then you need the support of your partner. If you're a small business florist shop, right? And you've automated this and you're using these tools going forward, you still need the owner to support you as you're trying to implement these business practices within that small floor shop. So we focus on what we call the core four. This is not going to surprise you. You've heard this throughout the day. So here are some more statistics going forward. And here's that word free again, against the, the four policy areas. And the way that we've designed this and we just updated it. So we call it version three moving forward, but we have just updated the program. Um, it's around these four core areas. And so we have um, these, uh, these areas, and I just noticed the slides say one, one, one. So they're all important going forward, but it is the core four areas going uh, forward. And what we've done is we've developed uh, personas. So there's little videos that are embedded into the program. So Jay is the operations manager. He has eight employees. We have uh, Celine, who is the HR manager. She has 50 employees. And then we have Jennifer, who is a supply chain manager who runs a business of 400 employees. So what we try to do is pick these different um, personalities and personas so that as you go through each one of these sections, it, it tells you like how to do things um, through that viewpoint and, and then how to be that cyber leader 
in order to be able to get the program implemented. So for example, on Passwords Plus, you've heard a lot today about multi-factor authentication, how to uh, do certain things, um, you know, password uh, savers, all kinds of different things. But what we also do is go down to the basic guidelines of, you need to have a password policy in place. There was a lot of debate going back in the Slack channel about changing passwords and this, and everyone says, don't change passwords that often. Do you change passwords? But the bottom line is you have to have a policy within your organization going forward and that it has to meet a minimum technical capability of that password so that everyone knows what the expectations are. So what we do in the core four is we even give you templates of what you can do. You can download these templates. You can put your business uh, title in there, your business organization in there, and you can move forward and you can establish a password policy so that you can train, which is another thing that you've heard over and over again today is training, 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 training. So the other piece that what we've done to make this a lot easier for you to go forward is all these videos that we have within this program, they're available on our YouTube channel as well, which then allows you to use these videos going forward um, so that you can train your employees. So if you start talking about what does multi-factor authentication mean, you can actually have them run and watch a quick little video. So the whole idea is, okay, train, train, and then retrain. So uh, a lot of what we heard today, like, um, you know, is going, well, you should be afraid, um, which is true. You should know what your risk is and you should continue to go forward. Um, but the other part of this is you should have tools that are easy. You should have capabilities that are easy. You should have the ability to create what we call a playbook. And so this playbook will allow you to move forward. And you've heard this in different aspects of we, we call it a playbook. We introduce this concept of business continuity. And the reason why we're doing this now is um, we had it as incident response plans. Those resources were sent out earlier uh, during the webinar today. But when you start seeing this, they, they don't have cyber incident response plans. Uh, business continuity, the way we're looking at this, and you heard the word today also about resilience. And, and it's more than just your computers. And I think the, the place that you heard this the most was during the cyber insurance panel discussion. And it's about your data. And the other part is, and I think COVID really brought this to light, is can you deliver your products and services? A lot of people, a lot of companies shifted to the internet so that they could uh, take orders online. And then we had the opportunity to do some of these webinars during COVID. And what some of the small businesses found out is, hey, our products actually get delivered from overseas. And so they got caught up in the whole global supply chain piece. They didn't even realize, like, where are these products really coming from so that they can actually then continue to deliver their services. Uh, the whole idea is, is to really take a look at how do you do this? So we do have tools that are available. Um, several questions came up about that as well. And, and it's about how do you prioritize it? So for example, if you have a business disruption, can you continue to take orders? How would you take the orders? If you have that disruption, can you continue to pay your people? That was brought up today too. Uh, through my interactions, as I continue to work in this space, one of the big providers that provides a platform for small and mid-sized businesses says that the number one issue that they have is because they use all these tools that are available and they're using payroll systems, right? That are calculating out all the things that you have to do and pay for payroll. The number one issue that they have is the person who was in charge of payroll leaves and no one knows what the password is to get into the system to be able to pay everybody. And so what these prioritization worksheets we have is it's asking simple questions about like, what is the most important information? You know, revenue, continuing revenue, your accounts payable, being able to ship orders, being able to receive orders, being able to process invoices. These are the things that are important for small businesses. 
And do you have a way uh, to do things if you're doing it and you have a service disruption? Because I think it was Dr. Dr. Aguilar brought up, hey, most of the time I'm using other service providers. I'm using managed service providers. I'm using the local Comcast business service. And if they have a disruption, how are you going to continue to process? Is your business global so that you can, even though you're a small business located, for example, in Martinsburg, West Virginia. I mean, there are platforms that are out there that are allowing small businesses to be global. And what happens when there's that disruption and how do you continue to work? And and the other key question that was asked today is, how long can you actually be offline? How long can you be down before you have a big disruption as it relates to uh, being able to continue to receive revenue? That's what the business continuity plan is really working through and asking uh, you to think about. And then the incident response plan is really, this has been talked about today, step-by-step guide on how do you resolve it? How do you quickly respond to it? What do you do? Um, How do you recover? And so um, I think there were some key things that were brought up today about third party risk that these tools would help you be able to identify to be able to go forward. I think the other part too, as far as the cyber insurance piece was to be able to quantify uh, what is the impact to you with, so that you can then present this to the cyber insurance or to the business insurance um, that you work with so that they know what the impact is. But what is more important is, is when you finish this program, you will have a playbook. And the playbook then will allow for you to be able to show to your insurance provider, hey, we we have policies in place. We do have an incident response plan. We do have a way, we do train our employees. We, We constantly train our employees. We have the training materials and the key about this is is that continuity of keeping it going and keeping it ready so that you can um, have that culture that continues to allow for you to grow as you're a small business that becomes a mid-sized business. And so what I have on this last one is you know, change your behavior. This is all about changing the behavior, being able to move forward, um, being able to be focused on it, and then to be cyber ready. So all these tools are out there. Um, There were several tools that were managed today. Uh, What I'd really like to do, and if we have the uh, ability to do this, um, Rob, is to really answer questions for small and mid-sized businesses or answer any of the questions that are in the Slack channel, because um, I think today has been very exciting. There's been a lot going back and forth, and I think there's a lot of information that we can share together to help them so that they can create this culture. And I know we're continuing to work with SANS because... um, SANS has such an outreach and such, as has been said by all the speakers today, partnerships with all of us so that we can then make this environment better for everyone. 